Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and welcome to another Wikibon whiteboard. Uh, joining me for this segment is Brian Gracely, and we're going to drill in a little bit more on the private cloud. Uh, and uh, what we talked about in, in one of our sessions was, uh, you know, what is turning kind of legacy environments into really a, our more strict or true definition uh, of a private cloud environment, and we want to look a little bit at, at the layer cake underneath it. Uh, so uh, the first piece I'll start at is, you know, something near and dear to my heart, uh, the infrastructure. Uh, we say, what is really needed to be able to make uh, my, my on-premises environment uh, from an infrastructure standpoint uh, something uh, that really is cloud-like? And the first thing of that is, I don't want to have to think about it. Uh, there's a CIO I spoke with, and he said, what we used to be good at with IT is, you know, spending two years and building that, that temple for my data. Uh, and what I need to be able to have with infrastructure is something that I can spin up quick, uh, something that is agile, and therefore the foundation for that is something that I should be able to get from a template. Really that is a converged infrastructure or even the, the newer hyper-converged infrastructure that I start with. Uh, so Brian, you and I have worked on uh, you know, those solutions for many years. Yep. Um, you know, there's billions of dollars of converged infrastructure being sold every year. Uh, it was a good first step to really simplify, right. especially the, what, those day zero, those standing up the, the environment uh, I can get it installed faster, uh, I can operationalize it so much faster, uh, and I think that's why so many people are, are using it today. Yeah, and it, it's, it's, it's sort of a natural evolution. Uh, when you're trying to go faster, you're trying to take some of the variability out of what's going on, and the reality is people were spending a lot of time, you know, kind of building what we call snowflakes that in reality were probably 80, 90, 95% the same from business to business, group to group, but somebody felt like it was theirs. And, and that thought process and the turning the nerd knobs was slowing things down. The more consistent you can make that uh, on x86, uh, converged network, converged infrastructure, uh, the faster that they could move on to actual stuff that drove the business. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of sad when you heard the, the poor administrator where he was like, you know, you know, Scotty, I need more energy. I need a little bit more speed. I need a little bit more storage. And they're constantly have to run around and do things as opposed to I should just have a really a platform for my environment that, that I build. And if we look up the stack, some of the stacks went really up the stack. So Oracle would sell you all the way up through the application. Uh, so, you know, we've written quite a lot about, uh, you know, what you get the further up the stack you go and the, the deeper you can integrate that, there's great value that can be owned. Right. Um, but most of the, the converged infrastructure, really management is a key component here. Uh, so so let, let, let's talk a little bit about some of the management pieces there. Sure, sure. So, uh, you know, a lot of different pieces to the management. I need to be able to discover what's there in the infrastructure because, you know, I may have some applications more compute heavy, some that are more storage heavy. Uh, so I've got to be able to discover what's under the covers. Uh, I want to be able to keep SLAs. I want to be able to basically describe at hopefully a business level sort of that, or translate between business and technical, what do I want it to do? How available do I need it to be? How fast do I want it to run? So it's got to have a, an ability to do service level management and service level monitoring. And then, you know, all the standard things you need. It's got to be able to do monitoring. It's got to be able to keep track of data. Hopefully that data we're going to put into more analytics engines to be able to, to optimize it and be proactive with it. So uh, really, trying to uh, you know, manage it such that we're managing it to the business application. Right, right, and, and that, that's critical, Brian, as you point out here. It's really here is where I need to have, uh, you know, you said SLA, the service uh, levels, uh, or the SLO, the service level objectives, mm -hmm. driven from the application, because that's the whole reason the application's there, is Absolutely. to deliver uh, for that application. Um, one of the things we, we, we've seen growing from the infrastructure is, if I was a converged infrastructure, and it's a, it's a box, mm -hmm. and managing multiple ones of those box has, has been difficult. Something, I, you know, I think back in the networking world, we've had years of that as right. to how do I manage, you know, not just, you know, a switch, but, you know, a lot of them together, how do I manage it more as a pool? And that's what we're starting to see being done a little bit better uh, with some of these infrastructure. Right. Hyper-converged by its very nature is creating a pool. Uh, so really, you know, right, we need this, this pool and this management uh, to really come together uh, and uh, allow me to manage all of the pieces together. Um, you know, one of the, the market leaders in the converged infrastructure, VCE, uh, they take their vision software along with, uh, it's really at, at the background, uh, the networking is a key piece of it um, th through the Cisco partnership to create what's called vScale and then they can take converged infrastructure, hyper-converge, or even just technology extensions, they call them, which is the compute or the storage pieces, and plug them in. We're seeing other companies that are doing that to say not only is it you know, one or a family of boxes that can put in, but maybe I create an API and I'm allowing other devices to plug into it and to be able to treat a, a greater 
selection of devices uh, from, for, from that single pool. Yeah, and, and the simplest way to think about this is when you're buying technology, when you're buying it in a, you know, a CapEx-centric model, you tend to be paying for that depreciating over three to five years. And that's, that's fine, that's very standard. But if you think about it from a business perspective, I'm making decisions every quarter, maybe every year, and I, I don't want to have to think, well, where am I in my hardware cycle, my refresh cycle? I just want to treat it like a pool of resources. So new business opportunities come along, there's a pool of resources there, I want to throw it at that, and I want this sort of software logic, management logic, and the application logic to say cool. So that's why it's so important that we have this sort of consistency uh, and be able to say when that next system comes on board, that it runs like the rest of them so that my business doesn't have to think about technology depreciation. It just says, give me resources to go solve a problem or go make profits or whatever they're trying to do. Yeah, it, it really is to turn this private cloud environment more, I think, I think of the public cloud. Yeah. So, you know, when I add more storage, it's not, oh, how many boxes do I need? It's, I just need capacity just, right. and I'm going to pay for that. I need performance, I pay for that. Right. I need compute, I, I, I pay for that as needed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the question is, usually on the private cloud, uh, I, I usually have good processes on how to scale up, but uh, scaling down is a little bit tougher uh, yeah. as, as to how I pay for that. Well, and scaling out was tough for a lot of people because yeah. the next iteration that you got was different and it was, uh, and that's one of the, the nice things that, that VC Vision does is it, it normalizes that, it rationalizes it but it also gives you the flexibility to say, well, if I still have some things that aren't totally consistent, can I at least manage them to some extent, whether that's uh, a bare metal machine, because I have to run a database on there, or maybe you're doing some modern stuff like containers and you, you want to you know, you know, do that in a sandbox for right now. So you want to have that flexibility as well. Yeah, absolutely, because uh, while you know you mentioned the VCE example was really good at first, VBlock was really one model. Uh, now there, there's a broad spectrum of mm -hmm. solutions that can plug into this environment. Sure. Uh, and <laughs> the more uh, differentiation I have in my environment, the more heterogeneous environment, the tougher it is to manage that all together. And that needs to be software-led as to how that pulls all together. Right, right. And, and all that is, is infrastructure operations, infrastructure costs. But the same thing, if you're talking to the development team and you can say, look, I can consistently give you things, uh, whether that's performance or availability, and you can give them a common language, again, you're getting to that point where you've got consistency between application people and ops people, and again, that's time is money, and, and that's valuable to the company. Right, absolutely. Uh, uh, bottom line is it, it's giving the business the agility to be able to move forward and deliver that business value, which is driven by getting those apps out faster right. and, and making changes more. Absolutely. Great. All right. So uh, stay tuned to wikibon.com for lots more research on this space and uh, check out the YouTube channel for lots of videos from theCUBE and the Wikibon whiteboards. Thanks for watching.